Yeah, um, it was actually when I, when I was two years old or three years old or something like that. Um, I st really just annoyed my mother by drumming on everything. Um, and I was just so excited about the fact that everything could make a sound. Um, but we were living in a small uh, apartment building and there wasn't really room for, for, for a drum kit or anything like that. So it wasn't, it wasn't until uh, we moved into a house and I was like 14 years old or something like that, I started playing the drums. Um, so that, that never really was a question for me what instrument I should start with. It was definitely the drums because, well, I, yeah, that was just the thing for me. Um, and I like, was playing drums and I was uh, attending drum classes for a couple of years, but I pretty quickly got a little bit fed up with the, with the classes. So I just uh, started practicing at home just by listening to my favorite songs and trying to um, you know, follow the beat. Um, and then I changed school at some point, and I met, met, a, uh, met a guy, uh, another boy at that time, uh, who was uh, in a band with a couple of friends, and he said that I should come down and jam with them. And, and uh, we started playing together, and I, at that time I was like 15 or 16 or something like that. Um, and we started playing uh, punk and reggae and ska and th those type of genres. So it was uh, very, uh, like very early on, I got inspired by uh, music from the Caribbean and from U the UK, where th you have the reggae and ska. It's very popular there, and it's kind of where it started. And uh, I w we were doing that for for a long time. And it started in 2004, and and. But then we started getting gigs in Copenhagen. I was living out in Roskilde. Um, and somewhere down along the way, there, was, there, there would be DJs uh, at the gigs that were playing uh, reggae vinyls, and they were eventually someone was playing Jungle, um, and which really caught my attention like heavily. And I thought it was cool to play, like the DJ was like, cool, like a cool person or something like that. Um, and especially that high energy, very fast tempo of, of uh, jungle music got me really turned on to try to explore uh, electronic music. Um, at the same time, we never really had like a strong policy that we should have like a clean style in our band. We were always mixing different things. Uh, and I really liked that. I mean, that you, the possibility to mix everything you could imagine. Um, so those two things uh, kind of sparked my interest in, in doing uh, electronic music and being in a reggae band, we were eight people and I was playing the drums. So I was always in the back um, and I wanted to kind of find out what it would be like if I decided everything instead of being having some sort of consensus with, with seven other people. Uh, I mean, the, it was great playing in a band, but, uh, but I want to explore like more, like the whole process of it. Um, so yeah, in 2007, I started the Beastie Respond name. So it's 10 years now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was focused on, on, on UK music, on drum and bass and on jungle. And um, quite quickly, I realized that a lot of the drum and bass that was being put out sounded completely the same. It was total like formula music. Uh, you had uh, 33 bars of intro and I don't know if that, not 32 it must be. And then uh, another 32 or 16 bars of something and, and then a change and then a breakdown and then the second drop. And I kind of got bored with that quite fast. Um, and then there was this crew where, with a, with a uh, DJ called uh, D-Bridge and uh, two guys, they called themselves Instrumental. They were doing like the fit, flip the script completely and started making some some drum and bass music that was not uh, formularic in, in the same sense that a lot of the other drum and bass that I, that was on the r around at that time, um, and that that really, I mean, showed me that you know it's not everything that needs to be in this way and. And I started to be, do more experimental stuff instead of just doing the, the like the two-step rhythms and all the time, but try to put the rhythms together in a completely different way. And for me, it was 
always about experimenting and uh, and trying to make something that was truly original and not just a, a copy of of a, like the latest trend or anything. Um, so I was practicing for a couple of years producing. From 2007 to 2011, I was just sitting at home, um, you know, fiddling around with the computer. And when everyone else finished high school and went traveling, I bought equipment and stayed home. Didn't see the world, but I, you know, spent a lot of time refining my production skills. And in 2011, I could finally release something. And since then, I've released an, an album and have my second album coming out tomorrow. And um, yeah, lots of different things, and tried to working, tried working with vocalists, and and so I've tried to explore like as much as possible. Um, at first, I like my first album was was a, a little like retrospective. I was really inspired by at that time the whole thing about using analog gear was very new. Um, so I kind of jumped, jumped that fat, <laughs> I guess you could say, and uh, and just stopped using uh, plugins, and so I just recorded everything with synthesizers, and so that really, you know, had a great impact on the sound. It has a very distinct warm sound, and but you all also get like a kind of retro sound out of it. Um, and I was very happy with that for a couple of years, but um, then again, I felt the need to, to reinvent what I was doing, so, I tried to do the opposite of what everyone else was doing, and, and then I sold all the synthesizers and uh, just started using started using the computer instead, um, and got more and more interested in 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 uh, the the sound design possibilities that's in in the computer compared to like a, a, a keyboard or something like that, um, and. Along the way, I started to discover a lot of more abstract, like it's, it's always about the abstract sounds for me and being as experimental as possible, you can almost say, and um, started going to Berlin quite often and and they experienced the whole scene down there where the, the of course there is the techno stuff and it's great, um, but also there's a whole scene of music that is more focused on like deconstructing electronic music, and I mean, it's it's when I first listened to some of the stuff, I was just like, oh, this is way too out there for me. But but once you get into it and and understand the reasons behind why you want to experiment with the sound in that way and what you want to express with the sound, um, it grew on me very much. So I become more and more interested in in a, what can you say? Yeah, the more uh, deconstructed music, and now I find it very funny to to find like the strongest cliches in in a genre, and then I mean completely tear it apart and put it into some new context, and and um, yeah, see how I can create something from something new from combining different elements uh, that's not usually put together. Um, so again, that draws back on the, 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 the intentions that I found interested in music in, in the first place, to, to make fusions, like weird fusions of, of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I get inspired by other music to some extent. I can be inspired, inspired by uh, specific sounds, uh, like a certain drum sound or a certain sound of, well, of some material or something like that. But at the moment, I think uh, I'm more inspired by, by liter literature and politics. <laughs> Actually, it sounds a little bit weird how to be in inspired by that stuff in writing music, but I get like the energy and, and anger and stuff from from the world like that's surrounding me, uh, and I try to turn that into to, to music. So it's it's very um, much about emotions and mood and 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 like feelings, but most mostly I think it's the like uh, what not extreme feelings, but you know uh, the like the the harder they provoke you, the better it is, the more inspiration I get from it um, and then I try like 
to to find a way to translate it into sound and, and sound design and melody and and drums. Of course, the drums are really Im important for me since I was starting with the drums. So, but it's not it's not like an easy uh, like there's not not a, an obvious way to translate the the stuff that inspires you into music. So sometimes it might just be something in the back of my head that's going on, and then I, you know, maybe it's not more or less unconscious, that uh, subconscious, that I end up doing music the way that it sounds. But like the, the the mood and the state of mind I'm in at the moment, I sit down and make music is uh, is what decides uh, what music comes out of it. Um, and then I try to um, to like do field recordings and and uh, and uh, I try to incorporate um, like uh, uh, speaking in, into the music and like background talking and from some of the situations and and uh, some of the, the like the, the for instance the political part uh, I try to include some of that into the music but not necessarily in the way that you can hear it but just because I think that the, the ideas should also be present in the music in some way, so it might be something that's completely stretched out of recognition. And but it, I think it's funny to to put it in there, uh, and maybe some people will notice something. But but mostly I think it would be like hidden. But for me, it's 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 the fun fun part about it. Um, so yeah, that that I guess what inspires me. It also changes over time. I mean, it's not it's not always been like this. Uh, I was used to be very inspired by movie soundtracks and and the 80s disco and funk and stuff. But now it's something completely different. 